episode 748 today on this April 29th of Monday. Welcome to the madness here. Thank you for joining the show every week. I love you guys. And thank you for uh, supporting the Patreon. All you Patreoners out there, there will be a new bonus episode this week, so look out for that one. Brand new Patreoner, Logan Redifer. Logan Redifer. Thank you so much. And also, Alexis Carrington. Huh. Wasn't that like one of those uh, Dallas or something, the Carringtons? I don't know. Anyway, thank you for joining the Patreon. Over 150 bonus episodes. Loving all you guys. We have a great story today. I am a denim junkie. I am a uh, leather jacket junkie. I've been posting up some photos lately of my leather jackets. And uh, it looks like a lot of you dig that. Troy Conrad took the photos. Some of you, I'm sure, are throwing a little hate. Like, ah, fuck this guy. (laughs) Everybody's got to fuck that guy, right? Ah, fuck that guy and his leather jackets. Anyway, I'll take it. I love the leather. I love the denim. And today's guest is incredible. Family-owned business coming on right now. Free note cloth. Denim made right in Los Angeles by Andrew Broderick and his brother, Matt, starting the company 10 years ago. I just found out about it about a month ago from my good friends over at Standard and Strange. They're like, hey, man, you ever go check out Free Note in Highland Park? I was like, never heard of it. Insane. I love denim. And now I'm all over their, uh, their Rios cut. I'm wearing this brown denim. It's fucking cool. Kind of has a a look of like an old Ben Davis growing up in the San Francisco Bay Area. I love me some Ben Davis. Anyway, this episode is great, man. I mean, I can't even imagine how rough it is to start a small business in this this fucking world these days. Brick and mortar, opening a store, making patterns, finding Japanese denim. And, and putting it together and then hoping that, that people dig it in the world of a, a million denim brands. But I'll tell you what, it's really uh, the people that are involved with Freenote that just gives it this beautiful heart and soul. So uh, I hope you enjoy this episode. It's a combo. I'm putting it on the Grail today, too. The Grail is uh, my podcast where I feature artisans and small businesses and stuff but i figured i'd put it on let there be talk also because i think the grail i love doing it but i'm so fucking overworked i'm like hey i'm gonna start a network during covid and then it's like holy shit can i just get five minutes to myself but what i'm gonna do with the grail is every time i have somebody on i'll put the episode automatically on the grail but i'll also put it on let there be talk That way, if you want to just only hear all of the artisans I've had on, you can just go to the Grail. And um, I think that's a cool cool thing to have, like a library of all these incredible people like Brian the Bootmaker or Grover Jackson. His story was insane. Free Note Cloth, Self Edge, Standard and Strange. Uh, you know, Jesse James Choppers, whatever you're into, you can go over there and find it all. Leave a review there if you want. Please leave a review on uh, Let There Be Talk also and check out the uh, YouTube. I can't thank you guys enough, like I said, a million times for tuning in. And uh, I really hope that you enjoy this episode. Also, Andrew has provided a code, Delray20, capital D-E-L, capital D, and then regular E-L-R-A-Y, number 20. And you can get 20% off all this week if you just uh, go to their website, or you can call them or go in the store and just say, hey, I heard the episode. I'd like to get 20% off on some denim or boots or anything they got in there. It's a fucking great store. So Delray20 at Free Note Cloth on Instagram. And um, once again, I can't stress enough. This is not an advertisement. This is me fully supporting small business and amazing people that are out there creating 
great, great stuff, man. Shit that you can wear for a lifetime, which is very rare these days, you know? Very rare in the Walmart world. I always tell people, that, ah, that fucking shit's way too expensive, man. Well, if you buy 10 shitty pairs of pants and they all fall apart, it's the same price as one pair, uh, you know, one pair of fantastic Japanese denim and uh, it's going to last you forever and look fucking cool. You're going to love them. Made in Los Angeles. That is so fucking rare. You know, there's people here like Good Art making great stuff in Los Angeles. Free note cloth, like I said. Um, Brian the boot maker. There are people out there making shit in LA and doing it right. Okay, tour dates, ddelray.com. I've got Minneapolis coming up, Acme. I've got uh, Springfield, Missouri coming up at the Blue Room. I have uh, San Diego coming up. Oh, I'm looking forward to this. I'm going to be running two shows one night. Throwing down an hour. Throwing down an hour, my friends. And uh, all the tour dates are at deandelray.com. And I'll be at the Hollywood Improv tonight. Hope to see you guys out there. And, um, okay. I think that's about it. See you at the Hollywood Bowl. Candles are lit. See you in San Diego on May 10th. Here we go. Andrew Broderick, owner of Free Note Cloth. Candles are lit today. See ya. All right, here we are. Another episode of Let There Be Talk. This will be a combo uh, episode with The Grail also. I do another podcast called The Grail where I seek out uh, people that uh, make the holy grail of stuff. Say uh, denim, guitars, stereos, choppers, anything. But uh, I'm going to release this on both. Let there be talk. So it's a collab with my network, Cactus Radio. Guest today from Free Note Clothing. Introduce yourself, my man. My name's Andrew Broderick. Uh, started Free Note about 10 years ago. Happy to be here with this podcast. I don't know if I should be on the grail part. Maybe put me on the other one. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, man. You, you've got some fucking great stuff. I'll tell you. An interesting thing about your shop is I am a, a, I love Highland Park. I'm an East Side guy. You know, I, I love Los Feliz, Eagle Rock, Highland Park, uh, Echo Park, all of that. And I, I, I'm always in those neighborhoods eating and seeking out stuff. Never had been to your store, and I am a clothing freak. And did not know about it until I was at Standard and Strange, my good friends, Jeremy and um, Neil. Neil. And I love those guys, like deep, deep love for them. And I was in there a couple weeks ago. And I was out in New York doing some shows. And I said, you know, um, I'm at this point in my life now where I want to get a couple different fits, uh, cuts. That's right. And... And I thought about it for a long time. Over my lifetime, I've gone through some cuts, you know, the 70s, the bell bottom. And then, and then it was the 501 in the 80s when I was in high school. That was huge. Then I got into the boot cut, the orange tab Levi boot that's cut. That's right. That's right. Then I got into the slim jean, the skinny jean, all of them. <laughs> it's a trippy thing. There are some people that never change the cut. I know a guy that's bell bottoms till the day he dies. I don't even know where he fucking finds them, you know? Maybe it kicks in at a certain age where, like, if you're of a certain age, then that's it. You're, like, stuck to, yeah. to that fit for the rest of your life. I don't know what age that is, but you just click in and you're like, all right, that's my fit forever. <laughs> so I was talking to Neil and I said, you know, um, I was wearing this one jean. And he goes, he was so funny. He goes, he acts to break balls with me because I'm a comedian. You know, so he's all, you know, I'd like to see you in uh, an adult gene. <laughs> well, he's, he's quick-witted. You're not yeah. as, uh, clearly not as quick-witted as you, but he's going to try to keep up. But he, that's, that sounds like the Neil we know. <laughs> so I've been wearing, you know, over the years, uh, Pure Blue Japan, Ironheart, Momotaro, um, 
uh, all these, uh, you know, different brands. And I'd never heard of your brand. He goes, here, try this on, L.A. made. I go, oh, that excites me. That's cool. And I put it on. I go, this is fucking dynamite. And I've been rocking it ever since. I'm going to wear it for one year and see what it looks like. But uh, how did you start and uh, your whole story? Well, I'll, I'll touch back on the adult pant that Neil's referring to and you just mentioned. You know, generally, that's going to be a little bit bigger fit. So away from skinny, um, it could be a classic fit, yeah. could be straight, could be boot cut, could be Western fit, but it is going to be a bigger fit. It's not going to be a skinny pant. And I think that's what free note, that's what we're good at. And you also brought up, you didn't hear about our shop. That's what we're not good at. We are not good at marketing. Uh, none of the brands that we are blessed to hang out with are very good at marketing. We're just try to be good at making product. So 10 years ago, my brother and I, uh, Matt Broderick, we were, I guess, becoming adults. So it's kind of cool. You mentioned adult pants and adult clothes. We were 10 years in action sports. Uh, we're surfers, snowboarders, and that is a young game. You're living real fast. Um, you're doing a lot of action sports yourself. You're living the life, but you do grow out of the clothes. You just become a little more mature in your tastes. So maybe you had good style, but now you're like, okay, I want to actually put that style to work and Fortunate enough, 10 years in, we were able to develop a brand that we're proud of, but it really is a reflection of our style and tastes as we grew up, as we were getting into, as you said, adult pants, adult clothes. Uh, 10 years in is like, seems like, seems like yesterday to you. I don't know. 10 years ago seemed like. Yeah. Goes fast. Yeah. Where maybe like you're out of school and 20 to 30 goes long time out of 30 to 40 and just seems it, but my brother is brilliant. He is our lead designer, creative director. I was actually thinking about it when I ran into you the other day, Dean. Is, he's the architect of what we see in the brand. Uh, the look, the feel. It's what we're both into. We both cross paths, pollinate all that stuff back and forth. Um, and I'm more the architect of the business, the shops, uh, production, sales. Some people say what I've done is harder, and obviously I look at my brother and I'm like, well, he, what he's done is, is, is like the magic. That's the unique stuff, the look and the feel. We look alike. We kind of dress alike, but people that know us real well know that we are completely different and have different styles and tastes, which start in this business again, uh, coming up on a decade. He's the architect of, of what you see, um, and if I'm giving myself some credit, although it I'm not giving myself credit, just the natural part of me is, you know, kind of setting up the business, um, making sure it can exist, just making sure we have tomorrow and we're not just living for today. So that's so, kind of cool that we have that yeah, dichotomy. Yeah, the, yeah, I mean, that's yeah. rare. Usually I, yeah. I tell everybody, Dean, sorry to interrupt. I, I tell everybody there's two of us. Yeah. And most people are doing this on their own. Uh, a lot of our friends are doing it on their own and boom, I'm coming right back to two people we respect, Neil and Jeremy from Standard and Strange, uh, giving them props, kudos to them. Two different personalities. Uh, they kind of dress the same. They kind of, if you know them, they dress different. It's, you know, that, I think that having a pair really, really is what helped us succeed. Well, I think that'll help because I always see the downfall of a That's right. boutique brand or a designer or whatever is it's usually the artist guy He's the artist, and he's trying to do the business, and he doesn't understand how to deal with people. So he'll be like, get the fuck out of here. That's right. I make them how I make them. That's right. That's right. So and and, and, and Matt's people. not like that, but to that right. extreme, to right. that extreme, you, you got to have that. You got to yeah. have that pair, and I, you just nailed it on the head. That, and it can go the other way, too, right? It can be like me. I can be like, uh, I'm not, I can be like a dorky business guy, and... Uh, <laughs> you know, not know what, what needs to look good. I hope I give myself more credit than that. No, it's just we have this two-headed company. We get along extremely well. Uh, we love each other. Uh, we're friends inside and outside of work. We do a lot of things in common outside of work. But when, when we're in work, when we're in the mode, uh, which is a lot, it, we're working all the time. We still grind after 10 years. We're, I was telling someone last night I'm working as hard now as we did when we were launching the brand, traveling, and 
playing for an audience of one, trying to get people to like this stuff. We are doing two different things at work. So Matt and I are fortunate to have each other, but as a brand, we're just, it, it wouldn't exist without, uh, you know, we lean on each other so much. So all respect going back and forth there. So what was the original vision of the business when you guys sit down? Was your brother into Japanese clothing? Because I've always been into it. Denim, boots, jackets, the real McCoys, all these companies. What Was your brother wearing it? Were you wearing it? Or what was the idea of the company? Yeah, both. So when he was working on the design side at Volcom, uh, they used to work with Cone Mills. Oh, yeah. That's, that's, that's the spark. That's all it took. Seeing a roll of selvage denim. Now, at the time, they were making what we'd consider more of a price point product, maybe like a $140 jean, $120 jean, where Volcom typically makes about an $80 jean. Does that make sense? So they're making a, a nicer jean out of Cone Mills. And that was the spark. Uh, music. I mean, we're into the same music. We like rock and roll. You start seeing what kind of, uh, you know, deep pockets. Yeah. Stage jackets. I know it's a, you know. Uh, biker culture but you start to see what people are wearing on stage we talk about it a lot like the stage jackets and stage kits of course people like jack white uh that's right people like the avid brothers uh you know jacob dylan wallflowers everybody's into like cool jackets and And, uh also you know kings of leon was hot you know wearing jackets strokes wearing leather jackets and they're very intentional about it like it's not just like some stylist is Given that it doesn't work like that, these guys are obviously care more about their music than anybody, but they also care about their style. So that triggered it for Matt and I. Real McCoys, that was like Mystique. We were familiar with these brands. Uh, we knew Japanese denim was huge, but again, our history was action sports and you know cutting our teeth in that in that world. So you know, growing up, you get a little older. Now we're in our 30s, mid 30s, late 30s. Um, you know, we start defining our tastes. So, you know, you have that style part. And I'm coming back on that Cone Mills. As soon as you see selvage denim rolled up, I'm not saying you're either into it or not, but it does trigger something in you, whether it's the indigo, the smell, the selvage ID. The feel. The feel. And then you're like, whoa, we make jeans out of this. Well, of course we make jeans out of it. Like, we, we're wearing this stuff. We're, we're part of this process making clothes. But then you're like, wait a minute. Oh, my gosh. And then you dip into the culture. <laughs> yeah. And then you read a book. And then you find out about... Then you get Clutch Magazine. Th- then, th- then you have 20 Clutch Magazines. Yeah. And, you know, we all have to start from somewhere. My brother and I, I don't think we... You know, we don't hide from that. But, you know, we weren't born in engineered boots and selvage denim. But right, uh, right. I'd say 10 years in the business. Maybe just a few years prior, really. We're, right. we're into uh, uh, more than just the jeans and T-shirt style. Yeah. Although, you know, I always say like, you know, America, we have James Dean, we have uh, Elvis. Marlon Brando, the wild one. Marlon Brando, we have, that's our culture, Yeah. right? And and you see it and as a young person growing up, you know, maybe that clicks into you or maybe you're like, wait a minute, that is. And then it comes back and then now we're starting a company. So all these thoughts are going in. But there is no one major trigger. There's no one, hey, I love this brand. I got to be, it was just, hey, it's time for us to go out on our own and start a company. Okay, now there's a whole other side of it. This made in the U.S. thing became so passionate to us. I can't even... I, I have to think about how passionate it was 10 years ago because now we're so embedded in making our product, uh, mostly in L.A., but Southern California. Now we're just, like, embedded in that. It's, it's in our blood. Which is cool as shit. There's no way it could go another way. Yeah. In a Walmart world, man, it is, I, it I, is going away. I hate to... I mean, we could conversation go anyway. <laughs> I hate to pass judgment and say, hey, that's because it's like, hey, this is what we're into. Let's talk about ourselves. This is what we're into. Right. Hopefully our culture and fans appreciate it. But the Made in America thing, you know, going back to starting Free Note was huge for us. We've said it in other kind of interviews before that we forget about. It's like, you know, we were making so much product overseas. And uh, you mentioned it to start the L.A. thing. Like L.A. and denim is like <laughs> yeah, fine wine and france you know it's, it's fucking cool it's fucking you know? cool and the machines are cool and the the labor's cool uh the labor force is so fucking cool who we get to work with uh machines the dexterity it takes to operate the machines yeah. the trade yeah you know what's a trade anymore like that's like hey you're a chef you know what you're doing you're a musician you're like it's such a trade we respect that part of the trade as much uh 
again, we're not very good at marketing. You're just finding out about our shop, and ah. you know these things are great. I like. That's why I wanted I, you on. Hey, I rushed to come on. I mean, we just ah. you know we just met face to face. You know. Seven days ago, so it was, uh, th- this is this is the marketing for us. But really, when it comes back to the product, we just it's it's in us. Uh, I'm such a big believer in supporting boutique, you know, mom and pop type stuff. Like we were just talking about all time on Hillhurst, my favorite restaurant. That's a, a hus- husband and wife, uh, you know, farm to table. Some of the best food I've had. Uh, Modernica Furniture Store. Jay, the owner. His vision, his stuff's all made right downtown. Some of the best mid-century looking furniture. Your shop. And then the people that uh, carry the handmade goods like, uh, you know, Kia at Self Edge or Standard and Strange. Uh, These type of stores are great, too, because they're seeking out uh, incredible handmade stuff, you know? You're not going to beat those stores. You you walk into... uh Standard Strange, Self Edge. I mean, there's so many shops to name. So I don't want to leave anybody out. But you walk into, it's it's second to none. The yeah. product you're going to find in there. And looking back on Free Note, our product was always pretty damn good. Like even first samples, it was pretty damn good. It was wearable, good fit. But where it is now, and I am very OCD about looking at other people's product. Yeah. And I'm very respectful to it as well. But I even see shortcomings Whatever. no 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 oh. i see how much better they've gotten oh yeah i say yeah, okay yeah. i see the shortcomings when we walk out of our life and say okay out of our shoes okay now we're going to you know whatever somewhere in the mall Course. that's where i see shortcomings that, that's what i'm talking hey, about you're gonna spend yeah. two thousand bucks on this look that's not gonna keep you that's warm it's crazy. gonna fall apart it's gonna rip i can't believe you're just paying money i get it people are so wealthy they just you know buy everything in sight but yeah what i see walking into the stores now and i that's my part of the job i'm in the shops all the time i see the quality of product yeah. Has even gotten better. Yeah. So. Oh, God, yeah. You know, you may have a pair of boots from five years ago that are your favorite 10 years event, but you see some of the guys, and it's because the trade's gotten so much better. Yeah. Like it was lost. Yep. 80s, 90s, 2000s lost, and, it's, and it came back, I'd say, you know, a lot of the a good 20 years ago. Um, and then so now you have people more our age, okay? You're getting older, and we're like saying, okay, I've been doing this trade now for 10, 20 years. Like, I didn't just start it last year. Now I'm getting better at it. All the product you mentioned, you start seeing that in the shops. It's like second to none now. Yeah, because yeah. Because it's gotten so much better. Can it get even better? Look, we, you know, just <laughs> well, maybe. It, but it, it's gotten so much better even in the past decade. Also, it's amazing when it can get better because the people get obsessed with it that are creating it. Say, a Brian the Bootmaker or John Lofgren the Boots or you guys finding... Uh, better denim, uh, finding different types of denim, different dye types, everything, different cuts. It's always going to change uh, for the better and move with the people's taste. Like, look, I went from a slim jean. Now I'm in a straight slim, which is still slim because I'm short. When you're short, you don't want a big old fucking jean because your mm-hmm, legs look mm-hmm. like, you know, they're two feet long. But I don't want to look like a popsicle either, you know, two it's, sticks and a fucking, you know. It's, in, it's again, adult pants. You got to yeah. fall somewhere in between. Now, let me ask you. So when you first start, you know you want to make denim. Is it pants first? And was it one pair of pants? And, and who came up with the pattern? Did you get an old pair of pants and cut it open? How did this happen? Yeah, so we, we had three fits that we started with. So two questions there. One, we, we wanted to start with a few fits. Some people can wear a lot of fits, some. And some people can only strictly wear, it's all about the thigh to calf to waist ratio to height you were, you know, we were talking about. So we wanted to give some variety. Uh, I don't know what the split would be. I'm, I'm lucky. I can wear a lot of fits. Yeah, same. Uh, I wear two of yours. I wear the Rios and the uh, Alv- what Avila. Is Avila. 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 Those Avila. are the two I wear. And so when we started, and even back then, it was a little slimmer, so we didn't have some of our bigger boy fits that we have now. So anyway, sorry, we're starting with the fits, and we're like, okay, well, we need more than one, and we're working with denim, and then boom, you go right into chinos, you go right into shirts, you go right into t-shirts. My brother and I knew we wanted, uh, we don't like using this word, but a bit of a collection, just something people could sink their teeth in. I think going back, we probably would have started more narrow. But who the hell? I don't know. We, we're so 
stoked where we are now because we are known to have a pretty big collection. We make a lot of product, small quantities. Yeah, big. We time. make a lot of product. You went to the shop, yeah. a lot of product in there, small qual quantities. So, stuff will be limited. It'll come in and out. But now we have the ability with the factories to make, you know, a lot of different fits. Um, okay, sorry. Going back to getting the brand going, you have to get a couple fits to start selling to the shops. On the pattern side, you don't realize you're pushing things out, and you're like, "Oh my gosh, I should have tweaked it a little more." So, right, we had a we had a full time pattern maker that came from uh, Volcom. He was with I think St. John yeah, by trade, amazing Vietnamese cat Leo, and he was a pattern maker. Now, being a pattern maker for different companies, there's different tastes and feel. So, like, maybe you're making suit pants, or maybe you're making like an officer trouser. Right. Slash pocket pants. It's all it's fucking all different. different. It's all fucking different. And then you really got to get the feedback from the customers. So that first couple of years, we were just stumbling a lot. However, we started so wide that we were able to kind of become jack of all trades. We care about our t-shirts as much as our denim now. Not a lot of brands can say that. Uh, Western shirts, we make, we make like six different Western shirts. They all have different fits, different shrinking patterns. I mean, we get like every fabric has different shrinkage. You're applying that. Every fit is different. Uh, we're making Western shirts to be tucked in, shirts not to be tucked. It just gets crazy how you know kind of diverse the line is. But starting out, we had some pretty solid patterns uh, from a professional pattern maker. And then boom, after a couple of years, we just start tweaking them, torquing them. A lot of times open up the hips, opening up the leg openings. Uh, we've worked with a lot of professionals in the pattern making business. And I think in the past, uh, I'm trying to get to my final point here on patterns. I think in the past three years, uh, we got a beautiful pattern maker, Marina, that just, she knows what we're trying to put out. Oh, wow. So it doesn't kind of pigeonhole like her history or someone else's history of what they used to make. Right. Like, like a t-shirt is not a t-shirt is not a t-shirt. Like it needs to, there's so many different fits. So she works really well with my brother and I. Uh, she's full time. Uh, when you're dealing with now, two thousand dollar horse hide jackets. Yeah, a yeah. Pattern and a sample. You can start draining money pretty quick, or putting money down the drain pretty quick. Big time. Um, if it's wrong, it's just so like she's like you know I don't know like how likened to your like she's like the master editor maybe I don't know she just is so good so we try to give her a, a few projects a week because you know just get one ready done but if you give her. You know, 10, it's like, oh my gosh, we're going all over the place, but we're just trying to perfect one piece at a time, and she's a master. Uh, we're lucky to have her, so that's about three years. We've always had pattern makers we've worked with. This was like a real recent full-time um, hire that I think really changed our business, actually. I mean, it really perfected. I, I talk about it all the time, the best is yet to come with Freenote. Our product is meticulously changing, and it's stuff that we sometimes talk about, but people don't see. It's quarter inches, eighths of an inches. Yeah. You know, people can say, oh, it's an inseam length. Well, that's easy. But these are just little changes in the hip, uh, in the armpit. Um, we're working with diff, uh, the well, armpit forearm, is, everything. We've got to drop armpit the pit is, a little bit. Yeah, armpit is vital in a jacket. People don't understand. Because you, you want it to look good? Yeah. But then if it's too dropped, you can't move it up. So you got to be comfort. It's that balance of yeah. comfort and looking good. And let's face it, we're, we're making clothes that look good. There, there's no doubt about it. I know everything about leather jacket fits man and uh I've, I've been dealing with it for 40 years and the smaller the armhole the better the arm's gonna look up here it's not like a football jacket you know not a letterman jacket big old poofy arm up here but the smaller the hole the more uncomfortable it's gonna be so you got to find this middle ground you know, we we say it i we're not uh and you know envy what you do and how charismatic you got to be but coming to the jacket part you're also on stage you're like you don't want to get sweaty up there <laughs> you're yeah. like it's just a it's a tight situation right yeah you know so you start having that tight armpit on there and yeah maybe but it looks the best but it looks the best so that's the balance that's, i know we we i don't want to say we grapple with that because we, we kind of get it now but that's a huge balance we do is does it function and look, and can we kind of blend that together? Going back to our pattern maker, she can nail that. She can quickly work through projects we have so that, you know, we want to put out a lot of product. We can do that. That's, a, that's an ability that not a lot of brands have. 
um, at their disposal. And gosh, it's just we're so so stoked to be able to make so much product. Now the denim uh, cone, they went out of business, right? They uh, did terrible. I wish that's uh, actually like this. I don't mind talking uh, like kind of culture and politics and business with people. It's like cone mills went out of business for many reasons. And it has a rich history and then ownerships. And I don't want to get into all that. But I, I would say that that business should have been like treated as a national treasure. Absolutely. As a state park, a national park. Historic landmark. You know, whatever it is. Making denim in America. And, and, and tax relief, whatever it is. I mean, you know, you don't want to tote the line on like who's running the business. But that, tough to lose that. So that was... I mean, it wasn't a blow so much to us because we were coming up, but some of our buddies and brands, they were using like majority cone mills. Oh, yeah, like uh, New York Jean Shop. That's right. And, you know, Tellison was using a lot. And, those, you know, it was, it's a beautiful fabric. Uh, everybody pivoted and is fine now, but I think if you asked everybody, and Free Note included, um, some of the fabric, they, they, their 1968 cone mill denim, it's kind of like a rich blue, midweight, 14 ounce denim. Um, some people didn't like it, but you're just like, it's such a classic gene. It's just, but who can't, we can't even have it anymore. Right. You know, it doesn't even, it's like, who cares who likes it or doesn't, it just doesn't even exist anymore. And it's any way to like, that should have been kept, you know, all the things we, we do beautiful things and help people out in this country. That should have been, you know, like somebody's mission because it's manufacturing and it's more than just like hey, we need nice denim made in the U.S., which I think we do. I think all uh, production, as much production, we need to make T-shirts in the U.S. You know, economists and tech people say, oh, it's, we don't want those jobs. And I disagree wholeheartedly. We want to make as much as we can in the U.S. And fabric, which takes a much more professional trade, uh, talk about dexterity and operating those machines, it's just gone. And some guys have done some things and pivoted out and great things trying to keep you know, it going or a little... You know, but it's just, it's a shame that, you know, it's just gone and it's not coming back. Yeah. You know, yeah. Was, so what denim are you using now? So we went to, uh, Matt's going to Japan in a month, but we went to Cone Mills a few times when we were starting the company and we had all these cool things develop. Again, this is 10 years ago. That pivot happened quick, dude. It was like, we went straight to Japan yeah. and uh, tried to get these relationships as tight as possible. Uh, you're, you're, you're trying to force a friendship, basically. Yeah, you're like, hey, you dude, hey dude, dude, can we be friends? Can we please be friends? Friends, yeah, friends, yeah. friends, friends. And it's, it's force for sure. Maybe that's, you know, my brother's the art, art side. I can be the business side. I'm like, come on, we got to be friends. You're, you brought that up. Like, you're kind of using some intuition. And, but we got in, and, and they kind of believed in Free Note. Yeah. They, who, they believed in it. Who did you go to see, though? Okay, so because I, you go there, and you, you don't know anybody. Does somebody bring you? Well, there's agents in the U.S. I gotcha. that represent different mills now we go direct and i was just mentioning my brother is going there uh he goes a, now he goes a few times a year but he's going back there in a month just to work on literally a 13 ounce natural indigo denim like he's going over there to work on one fabric wow we'll get business side of me's coming out so two thousand yards of it whatever 12 bucks a yard plus shipping you know so it's a big chunk and it's an investment but when he's over there he'll work on the next project yeah. And then I'll go back in six months and follow up on that project. So what we're trying to do at Freenote is have all of our fabrics be custom. <laughs> Look, we share. We do not keep our toys to ourselves. We just want Freenote customs as much as possible. So we're doing custom plaids, custom heavyweight flannels. We're doing custom knits. I could talk about this custom knit we're doing in the U.S. with a stripe. It's like crazy just getting it over the line. But going back to the denim, we're working with Kaihara. We work with uh, Yoshua Mills. And what they do is they kind of source out um, development to different small mills. Some of them are really small, little like eight machine mills. That's like a cool kind of like artistic thing. But we use Kaihara a lot. That's probably 50% of... Is that on the jeans that I'm, I got? The uh, Not the Rios. The Rios is a You have a Yoshua Mills. Uh -huh. Okay. So I'd have to go to Yoshua Mills. And again, it's more like a business and they develop it and then they send it out, contract it out to a different uh, mill that actually makes it. And these mills are kind of like no-name, kind of small mills, big, beautiful product. The ones you're going to get that I'm getting for you, yeah, got your head, all that stuff, those will be Kaihara. All right. Um, Kaihara has a good name. Um, there's so many. There's probably, well, I don't want to say so many. There's, there's six you know, reputable mills. 
our big thing is just working with them direct. You know, where before you're working through a rep, we want to work direct, which we have been for several years now. And then we want them to develop with us, you know, not for, with us together, our own custom fabric. Yeah, so they're excited about it too. They are too because now we have stores and we sell to stores and we've opened up a little bit of distribution in Europe, which has been a huge blessing for us. Now we can, you know, buy more fabric from them rather than just saying, hey, I got this little tree fort project and they're like well what's this going to become they know a po is coming right and again now we're coming back how did we lock you're like begging for this friendship but you know what now it's like these are like golden relationships of friendship and respect and you know couldn't live without them where are you getting your horse hide for your grizzly jackets okay so on our grizzly jackets we always used i'll get to the horse hide part second the first part on the shearling We've always used really premium shearling on our on our denim line jackets. Right. You know, merino wool. Animals come from Spain, like Spanish. It's just the Spanish wool's beautiful. So taking some of that and using some of that in the Grizzlies really makes like a nice, I don't know, soft, supple. I'm not sure the words here. Yeah, uh, yeah. But just really cool and soft feeling. Now the horse is what the sleeve, uh, back panel, or waistband, those will be the horse accents on the grizzly jacket. Those are coming from Merriam. Where? So Merriam, and that's in Tuscany. So Merriam wow. is actually famous for boot leather. Oh, wow. Now, boot leather and jacket leather are different, but we've worked with them now for two years developing this really tricked out horse hide that I think I was showing some folks at Inspiration. But um, after kind of two years of going back and forth, we just got our delivery maybe three weeks ago so we're ready to rock the, now, fit, the now, fit of the grizzly is great we, we love it we've always done a good grizzly with a uh, really good steer hide we use tusting and burnett uh we used another italian it's escaping me right now but anyway we'll be going with Merriam, and they they do specialize in horse hide uh tuscany has like you know hundreds of tanneries uh back to standard strange they introduced us to another fella that's doing some really cool indigo dyed suede and you see a lot of indigo dyed horse hide. Yep. So it's kind of like that's been done. You know, it, it, you make it, it starts to look too similar. We, you know, obviously we don't want to copy anybody. So they had this idea to do this indigo suede and it's got this brown core. So you can imagine as the indigo fades, you could have this beautiful brown animal yeah. core coming out. Kind of uh, like a rough out boot, you know, when that's it, exactly it. Yeah. That's, it's the same exact thing, but now on a jacket, that's it. And that's coming from a tannery in Tuscany, too. So now we're working with one, two, three, four people. We get our leather and shearling. Uh, Merriam will be the big one for horse, though, to answer your question. And that'll be we have a struck through leather. So for the listeners, that's a leather that's one color all the way through, meaning it won't fade. It'll yes, break in beautifully. It's not T-core. That's right. And it won't. It'll stay true to its color. So I don't know. I don't that's know. what I like. I don't know. I, sometimes I go back and forth, though. That's what I'm yeah. Trying to say like what the people like or what I... I don't so, like when it turns brown. If I buy a black jacket, I want it black. I, but then like, I feel like the first process of it turning looks really cool. But then when it turns too brown and then it's like, oh my God, we're crazy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we're like, like We want everything our way. This is how it has to be. It has to be exactly this fading. Yeah. So we have some structure, but then we have some that uh, what we did is we put this over dye and it really brought out the uh, kind of the animal grain, the, the skin, the grain on it. And so that'll take a long time for it to break through, and then that'll have a little bit of a brown core, too. But we have both coming from them, and I'll be going over there. We do two trade shows a year in Germany, uh, Berlin, uh, Union Show, which has just been awesome for us. Uh, for anybody that ever wants to kind of see the European side of the business, it's, Berlin is a great place to visit, and the show is culture 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 like that's it's cool so freaking cool european uh, so inspiration style show yeah we're bringing some shops over actually because they'll be able to see the line there so we don't usually we show the line in new york um they'll come see it in berlin i'm like hey just it's cheap over there but also you get to see there'll be more japanese brands there uh, meet some of the founders of the biz see the cult they dress a little more a uh, little more charisma in the dress in Europe and definitely a little more period specific, a little more heritage for the listeners, a little more 
Like if they're wearing 1940s stuff, everything's 1940s with the officer right. trouser. It's got the right officer boot, shirt tucked. You know, it's it's going to be total tight. time travelers. I call. Total, you got it. Yeah, so, here comes Oppenheimer. That's right, and it'll be Oppenheimer. He'll, he'll be there. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but after that, I'll, I'll pop over to Tuscany. Uh, I say this all the time. My buddy that's uh, started Brixton. You heard of Brixton Hats? And oh yeah. Brixton, yeah. I said Andrew, better than digging ditches. I said, <laughs> that's I, I say it a lot. So after Berlin, I'll pop over to Tuscany to see the uh, tanneries. Um, it's, I like working face to face. I even have a tough time. You know, I wouldn't be, be able to do this not face to face. I got to see you and yeah, yeah. Uh, Way better than Zoom. Zoom's a thing. You know, I didn't even know what Zoom was till like a couple of years after the pandemic. You know, I'm like, what? And I'm like, it's. it's I like touching. You know, oh, I got to look, look at the shit, you know, so I got to feel it. I got to put it on. And now that we're getting a little bit more of the product, yeah. a couple more shekels, you got to make sure that shit is exactly how you want it yeah. to be. You'll always get inconsistencies in the leather. We have no problem with that. I, I call it nectar. If you get a free note jacket, we cut the nectar. Obviously, you're going to skive it for the seams, but it is going to be just the best parts of the leather because we don't mind having some wastage. Of course. Because, you know, you're paying this sort of money for a product. We want to make sure it's, you know, to our liking. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that'll, be a, that'll be a cool trip. I, I've never been over to Tuscany. I've never seen the tanneries. It's been all meetings in New York when they come over for trade shows and whatnot. So that'll be cool to kind of see the process and see what they're doing. We've done some jackets with Horween, too. That's obviously closer. And yeah, I went to Horween. It's incredible. And I'm wearing boots made of Horween right yeah. now. So it's... It's like, incredible. No, that... And, and Horween is so... That's coming back to uh, Cone. You know, yeah. it's like, what does it matter? I don't know. None of it matters. But this is what we want. Yeah. You know, we don't. Uh, oh, I see it and I go, this is incredible. A restaurant. We don't want to lose that. The yeah. recipes. The, yeah, yeah. It's like. The, just, way they, the way they tan that fucking horse hide there. It's insane. And it's just old. I mean, this is old world shit, man. Yeah, They've from, been making the NBA from football basketball to, 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 to jackets. <laughs> yeah, what the fuck? Well, how could you mix all? It's amazing. Shout out to Horween, man. I just love those guys. Major, and they're uh, five days a week. I'm wearing their boots. So yep, that's easy. Yeah, uh, yeah. Nick's a nice. Uh, I've gotten him some free note pieces. He's he's great. He's, he's been um, great to work with and. I said, hey, I know these pants are a little expensive, and you get your shit. He's like, you don't know how fast I get stuff dirty. Like, I can get stuff dirty. Yeah. Even just at a bar. Yeah. Drinking, yeah. you know? But, like, oh, yeah. at the factory, I can get shit dirty. Nick's, like, from Horween. was like, you have no, no fucking cl- You have no idea how dirty. I'm like, well, you know, we make workwear. It's expensive, but it is what it is. All right, let me ask you... Um when you start the business, do you go brick and mortar right away or do you wait a little while? I wish you asked me that 10 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, a lot of folks, I don't want to say ask me for advice because I'm not nothing special. They ask me for input and that, that's the question right there. I mean, you're keen to even ask. That's like a special question. We knew at some point we needed to have our own store because it just makes sense. Of course. We make it. We sell it. I say all the time, we want the best denim selection. This, this, n- n- no, I'm saying this about ourselves. We want the best denim collection. We want the best boot wall, without a doubt. We better have the best fucking service. So love the crew that's there. I'm not as there as much as I used to. but Great guys we, in there. We used to have bunk beds. In the, I used to sleep in the back, open it up in the morning. Right? On the Highland Park one? Absolutely, because yeah. I live 60 miles from here. And it's like, we just had to make sure we had the best service when people come in. We can't fuck this up. I know we're the type of people you see somebody like give, you know, server at a restaurant lip or bat. You're just like, Fuck, dude. it makes you feel bad, right? Yeah. We just, we want to make sure everybody feels comfortable, is respected. And we knew we had to get there. But to your question, you can't start there because you don't have product and you're not big enough. And you just found out about the shop recently, right? Yeah. So, holy hell. You know, what are we going to do? So you know that you have to have stores, brick and mortar stores, not web stores, but like, somebody's store and wherever it is, you know, middle America, San Francisco, New York, wherever the, the shop is. And now these stores, thank goodness, have got become so much more powerful and bigger, but you have to have some brick and mortar selling your product. Totally. And then you always have your eye on, Hey, when it's time, we want our own brick and mortar. So when people come in the shop, I'm like, Hey, yeah, our factory's 10 miles from here. How cool is that? Right. Your jeans are 10 miles from here. So cool. Leather, leather, uh, we're working with a factory, uh, now three years, sewing our leather jackets, Maybe eight miles from the shop. Like, how cool is that? 
Like that's, you know, we're talking about farm to table. We love that, right? That's, that's what we live for. And, you know, we can at least provide that in Highland Park. But before that, to answer your question, we just knew we needed open stores to spread the word. So we're like coming back to the relationships with the Japanese denim mills. We're like forcing these French. We're like, hey, Matt and I will be here for you. What's it going to take to get in here? Please. And now we're talking like our best friends. I mean, this is, talk about symbiotic. Like this is our lifeline. Yeah, Rin Tanaka came to the store. We, we got to yeah. have that. He's the like, king of friend, Japan. And we got to have that friendship, but you got to start somewhere because, you know, again, we didn't all grow up together in this. Yeah. We didn't all grow up together. So we have to have some brick and mortar stores we sell to. So we call that kind of like our wholesale or whatever distribution. And we had some great ones like to start. Uh, and they're still with us. And those are like when you go on the road and we do events, you know, I'm staying at their house. I'm not getting to hotels. I mean, the friendship's just gone beyond business that's for sure it, you know if we ever thought it was a business relationship but it's way beyond that uh, but you need both and then while you're doing that dean you also have to be developing kind of your own kind of web presence and that doesn't necessarily ne- mean you got to be doing e-com and stuff like that but people got to be able to go to freenote or you know freenotecloth.com whatever and, and find out what the brand's about so you're kind of building that simultaneously and instagram and instagram huge i mean huge instagram is it's the gold. Nobody Who goes knows? to websites. They go to Instagram. And it's become Google, right? You're, just, yeah. you're, you're filtering through. But it's also like we needed this sort of free market where people could find out about us, you know, rather than, I mean, we've never done this, but like, and we wouldn't, but like rather than putting a GQ ad out or something like that. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's just, and I still actually do believe in print, but, you know, how are people going to find out about us? So we thought the brick and mortar to answer your question, they can tell the story. People can come into a shop in Philadelphia and find out about Freenote all the way across the country. And uh, I mean, the relationships are just like crazy how blessed we are to have them. We needed both. We needed to build the brand. We needed some brick and mortar shops carrying it. Now, you're kind of just like saying who's going to carry it. And you, we did our research. I traveled the whole U.S., went to all the stores, met the owners. We're all kind of we're similar age at the time because we're all kind of in the 2010s. Everyone's kind of starting to get this uh, you know, kind of heritage, made well product back going. And then to the side of this, we're also just trying to make, we're working with our original pattern maker. We're just trying to make a good pair of fucking right. jeans. Right, yeah. And I mean, logo. you could go meet the people and if the product's not good, they're going to be like, oh, yeah. Oh my gosh. So that's, that's like the overwhelm, like the colossal thought of starting a business, which I could never imagine you have to be ignorant to do it. You have to be young. You got to have super crazy energy. You got to be able to handle stress. Your body's got to be able to handle stress. You got to be able to deal with the stress. You got to borrow money. People are like, oh, uh, I started the company with my own money. And I'm like, <laughs> well, maybe, I, I don't know. I, well, I had to borrow money. Yeah. Like, I would hit up, my kids play soccer. I'd hit up soccer parents and be like, hey, I, this isn't, this is real. You'd be like, if I borrow $10,000 now, and I mean, you know, we're, my brother's good at this too. We're like calculating the rate or whatever. But I'm just like, if I borrow $10,000 now, in like 60 days, I'll give you $12,000. And I live in the neighborhood next to you. I just, I got to get this production. I got to pay this guy on time. I can't be late. That's, of course we had to borrow money. Of course. While we're looking at brick and mortar, this, that, Yeah, that. yeah. So now we have our store in San Juan Capistrano. That's our headquarters. Yeah. We have the store that you went to, Highland Park, which is, I don't know, seven years. It's home. It's, it's headquarters too. It's it's home to us. Highland Park's been so good to oh, free God. note. Oh my god, that's gosh. the grand zero. They've been so good to us when we went in. There was not much there. We went to uh, uh, Bobby's uh, bowling alley um, with David Himmel, um, Ben from Westward Leather, a couple other vintage cats actually. After Rin Tanaka, sorry Highland Park Bowl. I can't remember anything right now. And my brother and I just think we're actually when we were younger choking down a cigarette out front. And we're like, whoa, this place is, this place is cool. Yeah. And it looked affordable. And you know, we were never gonna have something on a Red Rodeo Drive. Of course. We know that. And, and but it, it's for the list- it's not that flavor anyway. Right. But for the listeners, it's like we just you don't think about things in terms of that. You're just trying no. to like, hey, where's a cool location where we can go get some denim and stuff? And right. Some of us have some more commercial. I call them like commercially located spots that have done great. The people we work with make such badass stuff that when people come in, they're gonna buy the best of the best. We talked about that. Yep. But we found Highland Park. For us, we found it in our, like, you know, we knew nothing about it. You know, we just, like, kind of stumbled upon it after uh, a big night out of Highland Park Bowl. And 
you know, it had been there. It's got a rich history. A lot of our manufacturers actually went to Franklin High School. Like, it's, they've been so good to us. But we had to get, like, a dumb and dumber. We had to get, like, plucked into the social, yeah. <laughs> the social yeah, pipeline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and even 10 years ago or seven years ago, it was rougher than it is now. I think it's hopefully kind of teetering where we'll see. But, um, you know, it's, it's just one of those streets now where new things are popping up. But we're hoping. Fuck, you're right by Via's Tacos. Incredible. Well, that's right. Tacos and, Via, or whatever. And, and, no, no. And, and fuck, you know, he's become a good friend, and he's got a uh, he's got a flight jacket from us. I'm actually making him a custom piece because wow. he's broad, and uh, he's broad, but he's about maybe I'm six foot. He's about five ten, but he's broad, big shoulders, like looks like a football player. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, you need like a 44, but we got to bring the waist, you know, a couple yeah. things. So, uh, but how cool is that? And now we feel like we're part of the community which took several years yeah and we knew we were assholes moving in in the way of like hey we're outsiders like we stumbled upon this place what do you mean we found it's been been here for years you know it's just like we were very conscious and respectful to locals uh even our landlords shop owners anything we what were, a great building we, too. we were head down we were head down because i don't know how much you know, Figaro and Highland Park needs to be selling two thousand dollar leather jackets. However, the town has accepted us, and I say the town, like the the the, the neighborhood, the neighborhood, uh, the people, the businesses have accepted us. Even like you know, transcending us as humans, like yeah, we've we've been accepted there. I feel like we've kind of earned our keep and done cool stuff, and we've done clothing drives, and we've donated, and you know, we show up. I love that neighborhood. We're man. always open, but that neighborhood It's so, beautiful. I'm trying to get to my point here. It's one of my favorite it's fucking beautiful. neighborhoods. There's in so much the soul world. in there, man. You you a night out there rivals anywhere. A yeah. night out in Highland Park rivals anywhere. Uh Bobby's uh Highland Park Bowl is Gimme Gimme. So fun. Home gimme, state. Gimme. Home state via's tacos. Oh my god. Um the movie then, theater we just lost. And then and then um I gotta touch on one of the guys that kinda helped us through there. Uh peanut butter wolf so stone store records has had their offices there like 20 plus years wow so chris would always come in and he'd have a show and he, he's going to I think he was doing a dj gig in dubai and it was hawaiian it was aloha shirt season and man when he buys four aloha shirts we needed to fill that register i mean we just sleep in the back sleep in the back you know yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. you know it's like we're just scraping by so now we have a three you know a team of three there that's uh, amazing but it's uh we're just so happy the neighborhood kind of accepted us but we knew that it might not accept us we knew that gentrification is real we knew that people walking by might not need a pair of 250 dollar pair of jeans you know they might need that like they need a hole in their head at the moment but uh, we love it and we're not going anywhere we're, we're here to stay now now before we wind it up let's go through the cuts and then let's talk about my new favorite jean this brown denim Rios here. Now, is that uh, a denim that's been dyed, over dyed brown? What, what is that? Because it is incredible. Okay, so you're going to have warp and weft. So, not to get too into it, but you're going to have the inside of the denim is going to have this dark black color to it. Okay? The outside is going to be over dyed. So, no matter what, you're going to have these white yarns that are going to take to dye. Now, the reason indigo is so popular is because you have natural indigo. I'm hoping people have seen a vat before or kind of understand what that is, but yeah. it's like this living culture, and it's really cool, and it... Looks like white cotton. ...produces this beautiful hue, and it's natural. Obviously, there's synthetic indigo. This is an over-dyed brown, so what's going to happen is that brown is going to chip away. Is it as natural as an indigo, natural indigo gene? No, no, it's not, but... You know, still made ethically, still made in Japan, and that brown is going to chip away, and then some of the white's going to show, and then some of that black's going to come through on the other side. Uh, you have the Rios fit. Yep. That is like our tried and true. You're on stage. Let's go mow the lawn. Date night. You're back on stage. This jean is for everything. Yeah, it's, it's a slim um, straight. That's what we call it, slim straight, and really like. It's always tricky, like, I got to figure out, like, how nerdy I can get talking to folks. But it's just our most regular jean with a regular rise. Looks great on the bunsies. Yeah. Looks great. It, it'll work with boots. Doesn't have a giant leg hole. It doesn't have a super small leg hole. That's it's right. seven and, like, a quarter or seven, right at seven. Right at seven. Maybe when it gets up to 32, 33, you got to get closer to seven and a half. So right. You, you double that to get the leg opening. But that brown really chips away. 
And then we do this cool, you're talking about how our product's getting better and better or not our product. We're, we're trying to make our product better, how it could be getting better and better. This gene is kind of an example of that. Working with the factories, we do this in a light brown and a dark brown. Yeah. And the dark brown, when I say chip away, just kind of means it fades. So you get your creases fast. But it also, when you get this over dyed denim, it gets real starchy, which I like. Give me crunchy, I'll, give me starchy. Also, yeah. it gets uh, like, there's parts where it's getting shiny, where the, the, it gets smashed down. I uh, just looking at it, and I was like, I've only been wearing them a week. I'm like, look at this cool That's shit. That's my favorite look. That's, yeah. uh, people use the word patina for everything. That's my favorite look. And I almost say it, and again, it, you're putting something very subjective into words. Right. So what I say is it starts to look leathery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It starts yeah. to flatten out. All the hairs start to flatten out. Yeah. Uh, and it just starts to look real slick and leathery. If you get a good black pair, we have a black gray denim. Sometimes black, black denim. Again, we're talking warp and weft. But sometimes if you get a good black gray denim that in, in that really flattens out and the hairs kind of just kind of wear off, you get this real cool leathery, sheeny, patina yeah. look to it. But anyway, yes. Thank you. Uh, and thank you for enjoying the, the Rios. It's still one Fucking of my tried great. and true. Um... What else can I say about it? Yeah, just our classic kind of tried and true. From there, we go one slimmer to yep. the Avila. That's the other one I got. But it's not that slim. No. Nope. And like, I, I don't say skinny jeans is a negative or this, that. It's just not what we do. Right. I have no problem with people wearing skinny jeans. I have no problem with people wearing elastine in their jeans, stretch. I, that's, they're, that's just not what we do. Right. So we have one slimmer called the Avila. Depends on who you are. You can look like a tough tough motherfucker wearing it. Oh, I mean, they're looks, not like tight. You know? It looks great on me. I love it. You know, it's not super <clears throat> slim in the calf. It's not a six and a half leg hole, you know, um, but it's I a good one. Seven. Yeah. It's so a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an inch smaller. That's yeah, exactly it. It's an inch smaller. It's you got it. perfect to wear with sneakers, you know, it is. And you can even, you know, it depends if you're wearing lower leather, like a uh, Maybe like a chuck a boot, it could work with that. But you're not going to yeah, be able to wear a high shaft boot. No, with, with no, that. no. However, That's why I, I got two pairs. Sneakers or even like you know high yeah. top Vans look totally fine with it. Yeah, Jordan ones and the Avila man killer. And when you're on stage, yeah, especially wearing comfortable footwear like that, a little slimmer tends to look a little more rock and roll it, of course okay of course and that's really a big we have a big western influence in free note you kind of get this like coming out americana west, freedom, americana pappy and harriet's there you go and the heritage joshua and tree and then you also have a rock and roll vibe yep. which i try to lean that way but it's like i can't sing but like if i <laughs> like yeah, i get you, it i'd be wearing the slim slimmer rios more rock and roll shit black yeah. leather jacket like you know yeah, that's that's kind of the look I would the Rios want to portray. Is, the Rios is dope. Um, today I'm wearing uh, our big our big pants, so it's like a Modesto. It's coming out in a couple weeks, but oh, it's a new cut. It's gonna be a new cut, and it's gonna Modesto. Be, it's um great name. Now you're talking like 19 inch leg opening. Whoa! And when you work though, bending over, messing with stuff. Yeah, like you know, I don't wear sweatpants unless I'm working out. Right. I, I guess this is my way of. Yeah. Kind of wearing my active wear. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like Also, I, the taller you are, the more you can wear a bigger leg hole. Huge, huge point. We yeah. say that with fit people. People don't understand. That. Higher rise. Taller, yep. higher rise, go for it. That's what you want. Yep. When you're taller. And then also, as you get a little shorter, some of the slimmer things, your waist gets a little bigger. Um, they start looking a little chunky. They look jockey slimmer, pants. pants. And they look tough. Yeah, they look tough. yeah. Sometimes I say you get this like uh, Ben Affleck, like Boston... Yeah, you know, yeah, raking yeah. the streets look like yeah, tough guy yeah. look. We have a gene for that called like the Portola, and you kind of look like a tough guy, like yeah. a guy that's gonna kick your ass, you know. <laughs> um, but on some of the bigger fits, when you're kind of, and you know, I enjoy fitness. I'm wearing my, you know, workout gear and Nikes and stuff. But when I'm back on the working, making the rounds, I do like that open up fit. Even yeah. bending over, you're not gonna get like the plumber. But um, when it gets hot, it doesn't get terrible. I mean, gosh, today's nice, but it's. You can kind of, you're not going to get all that sweat kind of when it gets tight on you. Oh, that's one thing I love about your pants. The pocket. I can put my hand in there. That's it's, a balance. It, that's, but you don't want it. You don't want it. Too, it's like no. it too deep or too, it's tough. No, no. But I'm saying the actual cut of it. I don't like a deep pocket bag. I can't stand that. This is a good sized pocket bag, but there's like a horse, uh, like a half shoe there where your hand, your hand goes in. Better. That's you intentional. Uh, yeah. The back pocket's intentional too for ripping your wallet out. Yeah. Um, it's I think sometimes we get lucky with those things, but those that's intentional. I'll say a few more things about our denim. We use a two-piece waistband. 
So you're yeah. going to get contour. That's two independent pieces of fabric folded over, sewn together. You're going to get so much better contour. When you get a single piece, which is the traditional way, that is the classic way to make jeans. Yeah. They can dig in a little bit. So we can make things a little, we can progress a little bit in our denim and still have. Yeah, because you know, they're really out. comfortable. Well, that provides a comfort. The, I know. The shape there, the back pockets, all our back pockets, Matt has designed custom. Great. Um, we actually got a lot of flack from that from the get-go, though. Oh, a why? lot of flack. A ton of flack. Why do you think? Because the look? I, yeah, that's it. That's it. People just yeah, feel like, no, I want my traditional. This isn't classic. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I would say, hey, you know, we're doing it. We're making it in L.A. We have beautiful fabrics. Yeah. I was just um, talking to Brian, the boot maker, back then. He, you know, he's a, he's a classic boot maker. And then he breaks out this gray boot. And they're like, no, nah, man, we want 40s engineers. That's all we want from you. And he's like, no, nah, man. No. Well, uh, people I'm will an do artist. that. People will do that. Yeah. But it's what you just said has happened a million times. You just want the person sitting across from you to open up and say, hey, well, if I want something completely reproduction, full yeah. vintage reproduction, there's brands for that. <clears throat> yeah. And he does do that. Exactly. But please be respectful on the other side, too. It's yeah. not like I'm making like something yeah. crazy here. We're going to go fly away. Like, and, you know, it's I like know. this still works. It's just little changes that... Why not make them? And yeah. one of them is as simple as, as it sounds. I talk about it all the time is a two piece waistband contours to your body a little bit. Fucking better. great. Okay, free note cloth on Instagram. At free note cloth. Yes, I even have to think about that. We're not good at marketing, like I said. Website. <laughs> Freenotecloth.com. And it's in Highland Park and San Juan Capistrano. That's right. And I can't tell you guys uh, enough to. This is not a sponsored show. This is none of that bullshit. I love this brand, and I had to have them on right away. Made in Los Angeles, incredible denim, and if you see any photos of me lately, I've been wearing them. Uh, go on in there, say hi, or give them a call. They ship, or, or go to Standard & Strange in New York or Berkeley or New Mexico and pick some up there or anywhere else. And thank you so much for doing the show. Hey, thank you so much for making it happen and having me on so quickly. Great Thank stuff, you. man. Thank you. Thank you. See you guys. Thank you.